Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I'm Beth Christensen. I'm Carly Crowhurst, and you're on with Making, Making Sense. Sense. We did it. That's our best one yet. <laughs> well, happy full full blown summer to everybody. I think we're finally at that point. But I can say Southern California is hot. It's the perfect summer day here. So I hope wherever you are, it is the perfect su summer day as well. My favorite season. I know not everybody, but um, I would like to say that our housing market is hitting its strides with uh, the summer months. But as of right now, it pretty much has put the brakes on. And um, here in SoCal, we are, we are just not moving much. Um, prices are not going down, but uh, time on the market is definitely higher. Um, and we're also seeing uh, really just nothing going into escrow. So again, kind of like last week, I think we're in a waiting game. So, so I decided to reach out to a couple of investor groups that I, uh, that I have communication with um, and discuss like, what are we seeing on the investor's point of view right now? Um, and the bulk of my information that I'm getting is these large investment groups are really focusing on the Midwest right now. Um, uh, Arkansas, Alabama, which I'm super pro Alabama, <laughs> which their prices have been plummeting lately, drops of like 75,000 in price, 95,000 in price. Um, uh, we've got uh, a little bit of Iowa they're talking about. Uh, I had one company who said, we're focusing on Boise, Idaho, because the prices are dropping so much there. And we know that they have the potential to go back up. Most of these investors, though, are looking to buy the home um, and rent them out. And not, I mean, not really the flip right now, but just the rent uh, to the rental market, because Rents are so high, they continue to go high, um, and they're really seeing that that is a viable opportunity for them to get into the real estate market, hold on to these properties for long term. Um, no investor that I've spoken to is really looking at a short term with their, uh, with their holdings, with their real estate holdings, and probably because a lot of investors are seeing that things are ticking downwards, but rents are going up. So that's where they're that's where they're kind of placing their model now, not really flipping as much as as getting those tenants in. So, Carly, what kind of loans can um, an investor look at right now if he wants to buy a home to be able to to put renters into it? I think that's a great question. There's a lot of avenues you can go for investment properties: FHA, conventional, and then non-QM, which just means non-qualified mortgage. So if you're just going straight cookie cutter FHA or conventional, typically it's going to be a 25% down uh, requirement. And there are going to be reserve requirements, meaning in the bank, you need to have assets that cover at least three to six months worth of principal interest taxes and insurance payment. And that's most of the time going to be across all properties owned. So asset requirements can be quite high. Some programs do allow to use 401k stock bonds, things like that. So it doesn't necessarily have to be liquid cash. So that's a plus. Uh, recently, I've been seeing some DSCRs, which is a no income loan on investment properties. Uh, rates are a little higher on those. Uh, in general, as a baseline, if you're looking at base rates on an owner occupied, uh, you're gonna be looking at anywhere from, I'd say one to 3% difference and rate for an investment property, depending on the type of program that you're going with. Obviously better credit, more down, uh, lowering the loan to value will improve pricing as well across the board. Oh, that's good, that's good. Yeah, I know uh, when we had the downturn in 08, we had a lot of hard money companies come up uh, out of the woodwork where they were pooling together people's money and being able to lend that out to flippers and um, REO you know, um, investors. What we noticed there is those rates were 10 to 12%. Um, and that's when our, and our interest rates were like for a typical um, owner occupied, like 5%. So those hard money people, you know, were, were making good money for their investment groups. And, uh, um, but I don't know really if that's something that we are going to see again, where they're going to be the forefront of, of investment um, uh, purchase, purchase money, or if, do you think that there's enough 
good solid loans out there that um, you guys offer that people can get in for definitely less than 10 to 12 percent? I think, yeah, hard money. Uh, I don't really dabble in hard money. I have in the past and when needed, they can be a good way to get into a house. But I think there are a lot of other avenues you can you can utilize to get into an investment property that don't don't require the hard money, so to speak. Yeah. And those are typically shorter term loans. But another thing, just back to your point too, about the different areas, when you mentioned Boise, Idaho, and I thought that was kind of interesting because I looked in Boise um, about two years ago to buy a property. And when I went out there, I just personally didn't see infrastructure there to support the growth. And I think that's something important people should be looking at when they're buying investment properties, because you want to make sure it's sustainable. Uh, I think about recession and, and if you're an investor and you have tenants in your property, are, are their jobs solid? Are they going to be able to continue making their rent payments? So just exactly, exactly. just a little food for thought. <laughs> well, and that's the thing too, with these investor groups, um, they are talking about where, where are the say, uh, blue collar jobs. Those are the people who, you know, go to work every single day, do, um, uh, they do pay their bills. They, uh, haven't really been able to save up for housing. Housing prices have gone up in those areas. Um, and, but they're able to, to get in with rent for first and last, um, or even, you know, there's a couple of programs where they're financing the security deposit. So a person would only have to get in with, uh, their first month's rent and finance the security deposit. So there's so many programs out there right now for the investor um, and uh, and for tenants trying, or for really the landlord trying to get tenants in the door. So I think that that's really going to be the focus right now in this housing market. Um, not really uh, our traditional buyer um, and, and focusing on selling your, you know, single family residence to another uh, buyer, I think it's really going to be looking at what the investors are going to come in and do with the homes. Are they going to flip them? Are they going to put in the long-term tenant and keep those in their portfolio long-term, which I think that's really the avenue um, that most investment companies are going. And I mean, I still am reading like DR Horton bought a, an entire block of homes in Arizona um, and they're doing nothing but renting those out. So they're they're putting tenants in and that's their that was their, um, I guess, forecast as to how they were going to deal, one, with the, their bottom line, I'm sure, but two, with the housing shortage um, and getting more tenants in. So super exciting stuff to come, I think. Absolutely. I think that's a very interesting shift, too, because we talked last week about builders starting to lend their own money to keep price, you know, keep the interest rate low and get these properties sold, but now shifting into a landlord type agreement. Uh, just to turn over, I guess, higher profits in a way month to month. I wonder what longevity looks like for that and how long they'll stay in that kind of a, a business yeah. arrangement. Yeah, exactly. If they're just going to build a whole community for nothing but rentals, are they banking on the fact that the real estate is going to continue to go up over the years and they're gaining the the cash flow on the monthly basis by renting it out and the prices, you know, longevity are going to double, which... If you look back, you know, I, I'm going to talk about neighborhoods here in our area that they started building in 2004, kind of shut off in 2008, went down low. And now those homes have tripled in prices from where they first sold. So I think, um, you know, maybe a builder is even looking at that and saying, well, if I just hold on to it, again, certain areas, certain neighborhoods, um, uh, and, and would that be a better long-term investment for the company? I think the builders lost so much in 08 that they're that they're really trying to wrap their head about around different uh, avenues to to keep the company going strong, which, you know, do, making their own loans to the buyers is one of the great, I guess, uh, mindsets of, of some of these builders to keep their prices up. So maybe we should get into lending. I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll lend our own money to <laughs> I've got a doghouse in the back. We could do that. <laughs> there you go. Hey, you know, you got to be creative in these times. It is For interesting sure. that we're starting to see a lot more creativity, creativity in how we're structuring loans. I'm seeing a little bit more open-mindedness on the non-QM side, a little more rigidity on conventional though, which, you know, will push more people out of that 
type of program and over to things where you're a little more outside the box and as far as income requirements and things like that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I know they learned a lot from 08. So I don't think that any issue that we're going to have is going to be based on our loans again. I think our loans are super solid. Um, I think it's going to be other avenues that changes the real estate market. I agree. I think loans are solid. I think the only reason we'd have a higher default rate would be due to job loss with the recession. I don't think we'll have people just dumping their homes and walking away like we did in 08. I agree. I agree. I agree. That's why I'm focusing kind of even on uh, like short sales right now and seeing what we're looking at in the in the way of defaults. Are are people even at that point or you know what? Uh, what's that avenue going to look like instead of people just walking away? So it'll be interesting. Yeah. Well, short sale purchases might be where hard money comes in. Those are a little easier to do than trying. You can you can get financing on short sales, but it's very hard and very time consuming. Very time consuming. I agree. I agree. Well, awesome. Thanks, Carly. I hope you have a great week, and thank you everybody for tuning in. Uh, we look forward to bringing you more information next week. All right. Thank you, Beth. That was fun. As always, it's been fun. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks.